Caddis Maximus here. This time, just with a quick review of this Central Tools half inch drive, 150 foot pound dial torque wrench. I reviewed a long time ago, and I'm getting trying to get better. I'm still doing this all on my cell phone, so it's a bit awkward to hunt down and copy and paste links and then edit edit them in the the other descriptions. I'll get better at that, but it's really pretty cumbersome it, you know in the next year i'll get to better working on that when i get a computer uh in the meantime let's review this so this is an early style deflecting or excuse me dial torque wrench it's like a deflecting beam torque wrench like such as this except for the mechanism works just slightly differently on this you just have a piece of steel and then as it bends it has a second metal rod which just floats, and it's actually the indicator needle. So as the main rod bends, that indicator starts sweeping across this, these graduations here. And this is all, prop, you know, especially hardened type of steel, and the diameter and the length is all calculated. So that when it bends, that's what's causing the needle to sweep, and it's calibrated. So when it bends a certain amount, you're applying a certain amount of, of torque. Now, uh, I did the consolidated instruments and it looked a little different. This is a vintage unit. I'm not, I don't, it's been a little hard finding any real information online about these. I suspect this was made somewhere between you know, some 70s or 80s or something. It may be a little earlier. But the consolidated instruments, more modern ones, have uh, a closed in box structure where this kind of looks like a split beam. But it's really similar, very similar to this style, where you have one beam where it's just screwed into this uh, uh, cast aluminum handle. And then you have a second beam here. And there's actually just a microscopic amount of space for this second beam to actually move back and forth. Then that connects to a little lever system, which then activates the needle. So if we put a socket on here and we start putting torque on it, this a microscopic amount of movement on this affects the needle a great deal and so as we put torque we can see how the needle moves back and forth i always like these kind of torque wrenches because uh dial torque wrenches give you like a real-time readout and you can use them to measure turning torque say god it feels like that's too much force it should only be turning with five pounds of force you can use this put it on something that's supposed to rotate and then push on it and see if it uh, uses more torque. Maybe there's a sticky spot and you'll see the torque jump up, which is kind of nice. This one is, even though it's dinged up, this is actually be considered pretty decent shape. Even though there's a little bit of, you know, some surface rust. Uh, it's There's no deep gouges, especially the dial face. It isn't beat up. This one also has a, a secondary dial. So you might set this at your desired torque level. And then as you're torquing, you just watch the black needle tell it came up to the red. This one's old, so this doesn't stay in place very well. But that's the intention of what these second needles are for. Although on some units, the second needle isn't just a marker that you set. The first needle will actually push this other one, so it'll let you know it's like a peak hold. It lets you know how much torque you actually hit. What still does work good is this is a friction dial, so you can set this. Uh, in various fashions, say you're working counterclockwise and it may be easier for you to go to zero, you can say, set it at 25 foot-pounds. And then if you go counterclockwise, you'll just wait till the needle hits zero and you know you've actually applied 25 foot-pounds. So that's what's always kind of nice. And this one's pretty accurate, or it's more than accurate enough to use for general purpose, like tightening wheel lugs and that kind of stuff. But it's a little difficult to... I mean, one method to test torque wrenches is against another torque wrench. It's difficult to do that without two people when you're using a deflecting beam. But if you have a click type torque wrench, you can at least see if the torque, whatever used torque wrench you may be buying, is grossly out or is close enough. Most torque wrenches are only rated to uh, like 5% or something of their reading. So, and sometimes more than that, there's surprisingly quite a bit of variance. Uh, and that's considered, and it's due to the dynamics of torque. Oh, one other thing I was going to mention is this is a fixed head torque wrench, meaning there is no ratchet mechanism, but it is simple and it is robust and reliable, but it does make it more of a hassle. Um, like 12 point sockets, 
These are the type of tools that you really need 12-point sockets for. They aren't just for special 12-point fasteners. When you have like a torque wrench like this that has no ratchet, then you need the extra sweep angles from a 12-point socket to really make it effective. A feature that this one had is a couple things. One, or is two in one, but this anvil is actually has two ball detents in it and is removable, which I've never seen on a torque wrench. And I suspect that there may have been a second anvil that came with it that was machined down the three eighths so that you could interchange it. But it also allows you to put it in backwards like this way, just for the situations where maybe you're really close to some type of object and this whole dial face may be interfering. You can actually flip the anvil around. And that's actually the only time I've ever seen that on a torque wrench is this old one. Now, uh, I don't have the Consolidated Instruments to compare this to. I did end up selling it. I'll probably end up selling this one. I found it, uh, surprisingly enough, at a thrift store for 10 bucks. And that's how I find all my tools. I have just a really good eye. I can spot this kind of stuff from halfway across the store sometimes. And you just see that and you're like, oh, I know what that is. Even though I've never owned one of this style, you could easily tell that uh, such a strange wrench would be a torque wrench. Now, another thing I was going to mention about Central Tool Company, they used to be a really nice American-made, this is an American-made torque wrench. It was even patented. Um, and then Harbor Freight came out with their Central Pneumatics and Central Hydraulics. And for a long time, I was confused. The Central Tool Company was a quality tool company. And unfortunately, Harbor Freight kind of tarnished the name of Central via all their house brands that were obviously... Uh, not any kind of related hand tools and uh, very poor quality. So don't get confused. If you see a central and it's usually it has that reticule right there, that crosshair, that's uh, how you really know that it's a genuine uh, central tool and they are actually pretty nice. So what I have here is the big long torque wrench that I did keep, this really beautiful CDI super long handle. And... Uh, what I've done is I've just taken a socket and I took a eight point half inch drive socket. And what I've done is I just set it to 40 foot pounds. I know this CDI is pretty darn accurate. And you'll just take the other torque wrench and actually put it in and then see what happens when you start to torque on it. So we'll do this right here in my hand and we'll just start torquing. And we can see that it's not super accurate. I don't have the proper angle, so I may not be doing this, you know, uh, I may have a little bit of binding, so it may be a little artificial, but just generally speaking, you can see that it's not too bad. And uh, it's reading at least five foot pounds or so uh, high, I would say on this, but uh, to tell you the truth, the variance of the torque wrenches, say 3% on this one and 3% on this one could actually make up you know, a 6% could even be 8 or 10%. It's really surprising sometimes. And it was actually working. It was much more accurate before I started recording this video, but that's inevitably how it goes. And 30 foot-pounds is the lowest value on the CDI, but it actually starts becoming a struggle at 40 and 50 plus. And the discrepancies start going away further. But even at 30, it's not too bad. This is saying 35 when I have the wrench set at 30, so... Overall, I would be satisfied. If I had a torque wrench and uh, that's how close it was, I'd say it was just fine, really. Anyway, that was just a review of a vintage tool for people who are into vintage tools. And then you have an idea of uh, central tools and old style dial torque wrenches. And that they're actually just handy and convenient. Uh, one of the big conveniences is you don't have to twist them, even though click types are nice and, you know, dials have their issues because you actually have to stare at the dial and if you're at a steep angle, obviously the line won't line up properly. And you always have to kind of compensate for that. You would want to zero it off at whatever viewing angle you're going to be looking at, at, looking at it when you're actually applying the torque. But they're just really convenient and I like them because you don't have to set anything. You just get your torque wrench, put a socket on it, and then torque to whatever value that you need. No twisting handles up and down or twisting little knobs or adjusting things on electronic torque wrenches. You just grab the wrench uh, and torque. And these tend to be a bit more durable and there's just less to worry about. 
than traditional deflecting beams where if you set this down, you know, you have to be careful that you don't just toss it, you know, onto a bunch of tools or parts because you don't want to bend this needle because then that will cause it to be inaccurate. Where something like this is uh, definitely a bit more reliable in general shop use. And as far as this, this unit, it's pretty nice. The only thing I'll mention is this guard here doesn't actually go all the way up to protect the face. It's more just to prevent your hand from bumping into the dial when you're using it. Although it might have been nice if they would have made this just a bit taller so it would provide more protection for the dial. But it does show that this was a respected tool because, of course, the face of the dial is not broken. And in a situation like this, that would be the first thing to go if it was dropped or just abused. Anyway, I think that will conclude uh, another tool review from Caddis Maximus. I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.